What's up everybody, Alice Ford here, and today I'm in Nebraska, and right behind me is part of the Oregon Trail. Now, the spot I'm at right now is called California Hill. There's actually a big hill here where thousands of wagons over about 20 year period in the 1800s came over this same spot right here. Now, right here you can actually see the old wagon marks where a quarter of a million people actually came through this area, heading out west to start new lives. And the Oregon Trail was a game on the computer that my sister and I played all the time. So hopefully I'm not going to die of cholera or get bitten by a snake while I'm out here. But the Oregon Trail was such a big part of American history. It's really cool to see some of this area still here and where you can see the wagons came around this bend. So, so awesome. I'm going to be heading later today up to Chimney Rock and then to one of the national monuments here in Nebraska as well. All right guys, little word of advice here too. If you are coming out here and you wanna see this same spot, you can park by the road. And if you don't have four wheel drive, I wouldn't recommend coming out here because just <laughs> look at the mess I made on my car with four wheel drive. I'm barely gonna be able to get out of here because the road is really soft and it's not maintained. So just know that when you're coming out here, park by the road and walk up in if you wanna check it out. The Oregon Trail was a 2170 mile east to west emigrant trail made specifically for large wheeled wagons. It connected the Missouri River to valleys in Oregon and traveled through Nebraska, Wyoming, and Idaho. And I have just now arrived in western Nebraska where one of the most famous and recognizable landmarks along the historic travel corridor exists. Chimney Rock was one of the greatest symbols along the Great Western Immigration. It served as a landmark for those on the Oregon Trail, the Mormon Trail, and the California Trail. The slender spire of rock rises 325 feet from its conical base and 48 from the North Platte River. The Oregon Trail was laid by fur trappers and was originally only passable on foot or horseback but later cleared for wagon trails. Right now we're traveling along Highway 26, which follows the route of the Oregon and Mormon Trail. Now the main difference between these trails was right here behind me, the North Platte River. This really separated the two trails. The Oregon Trail was to the south and the Mormon Trail was to the north. And about a thousand feet behind me right here is where Brigham Young and his company actually camped on their way to Salt Lake City. Brigham Young was the leader of the Mormon religion, and between 1847 and 1860, over 43,000 Mormon settlers and tens of thousands of travelers on the California and Oregon Trail followed Young to Utah. The next stop on our Oregon Trail road trip through Nebraska here is Scott's Bluff National Monument. Now this is exactly where the pioneers came through. Just steps away from me here are some more areas of the Oregon Trail, but the first thing we're going to do while we're here is actually take this one and a half mile trail up to the top of Scott's Bluff and see some of the views from up there. You can get a little bit of a lay of the land from up there. Scotts Bluff National Monument is located west of the city of Gearing in western Nebraska. Now the National Park Service site protects over 3,000 acres of historic Overland Trail remnants of mixed grass prairie, rugged badlands, towering bluffs, and riparian areas along the North Platte River. A little bit further. One of the really cool things about this trail, the Scotts Bluff Trail, is that you get to go through these tunnels that actually take you through the monument. And you can actually see where people actually dug some of this cave out. Now, 
Most of this monument is actually made of clay and sandstone, just like Chimney Rock. Millions of years of erosion are in these rocks. Can you picture yourself as a pioneer coming through this valley full of giant monoliths, never seeing anything beyond Kansas before and coming upon this? It'd be pretty spectacular. Between 1841 and 1869, over 350,000 people traveled west past Scott's Bluff. And before 1851, pioneers used Robodeau Pass which is the entrance into this park. And this was because the badlands between the river and the bluff made travel impossible. Scott's Bluff was also on the route for the Pony Express, which operated for just 18 months and could deliver mail from Missouri to San Francisco in just 10 days. Now they used a horse relay system of high speed riders to accomplish this, but sadly the Pony Express went out of business as quickly as it came into business with the invention of the telegraph. The US government actually deemed most of the plains as unfit for settlement. It was described as a vast desert filled with millions of bison and Native Americans. Seven Native American tribes owned the land in Nebraska and through treaties gave away their land to the U.S. government. But for those travelers along the Oregon Trail, they provided protection from animals and the elements for many, trading for food, furs, and safe passage. And had they not assisted many of these travelers, most would not have made it to Fort Laramie, which was the next trading post on the way out west. Well guys, a lot of interesting things just happened. I was going to go drive through these tunnels over here at the National Monument, but I missed the closing time by just about four minutes. They actually close at four. I went to go through them at 4.05 and missed it. So put the drone up in the air, away from the monument on the other side where I knew I wasn't on National Park property. And unfortunately, I lost connection with the drone. It crash landed somewhere above my head and I have climbed about as high on this mountainside as I can safely and I'm not going to be able to rescue the drone. This is all sandstone and as soon as you touch it it just crumbles and gives away so really unfortunate loss today of this little mini drone which was a new purchase for me. Luckily I do have insurance and luckily because I am so close to the drone you know close enough but not <laughs> close enough to get a signal but not close enough to actually rescue it. I was actually able to download all the footage so you guys will be seeing some of that in this video. And um, other than that, this has been a pretty awesome day out here in Nebraska. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna do a little follow up to this when I get back to the hotel room as well so I can show you guys some of the route that I took here if you guys wanna do it yourself. Hello, hello, welcome back to the hotel here. I am actually not in Nebraska anymore, I'm actually in Mexico City, so filming this a little bit post vlog here. But I wanted to show you guys the route that I took through Nebraska and answer you know, any questions that might come up if you are wanting to do kind of this route through the Midwest and see some of the things that I saw, like Chimney Rock, follow the Oregon Trail, go to Scott's Bluff National Monument, and you know there's some other places that i didn't mention in the video that i wanted to talk about so let's just jump into that right now so here is the map of where i went and i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger here so you guys can see it so i actually started over in branson missouri when i did this road trip 
As you guys know, if you already watched my video on Land Between the Lakes in Kentucky, that was my first stop. And then after that, I actually spent two nights in Branson, which if you've never been to Branson, Missouri, it's actually really cool. There are, it's kind of like the Las Vegas of the South, I guess. And there's a lot of shows there. You know, you can go on riverboat cruises. There's a lot of outdoor kind of adventure things like kayaking and fishing and even rock climbing and hiking. There are some awesome little nature trails that I took while I was visiting there as well. And if you've got teenagers or even extended family that you're traveling with, Branson is an awesome place to stop. There's an aquarium, there's adventure parks, zip lining, you name it. There's a little bit of everything in Branson. There's also some great restaurants that you can stay in and it's a small town but it packs a punch so if you're going through that area definitely recommend checking that out especially if you're going to be like heading down to the ozark national forest or something like that but let's get into where i went on this trip so from branson i actually headed north up through kansas city and i actually spent the night in this little town called saint joseph which oops which is right here. It's actually still in Missouri, not quite in Nebraska, but I spent the night there just at a Marriott um, that was, you know, kind of on the side of the road. And then the next morning I actually got up early and I kind of went off the freeway because I prefer to kind of travel on small roads if I can, you know, I, I fill up with gas and then I just kind of like to see the countryside, not just the freeway. So I actually found this awesome place called the Los Bluff National Wildlife Refuge. This was not a place that I planned on stopping at, but it was a really awesome place to stop there. It's basically a bird sanctuary, and I'm gonna throw some videos up right now so that you guys can look at it. But there's eagles, and there were thousands of birds from waterfowl um, to, you know, big predator birds like eagles. There were all kinds of water animals muskrat, uh, beaver, and lots of fish and birds. It was just really cool to drive around in this place in the morning hours. And I only saw one other person while I was there. So it was a really nice kind of little experience with nature. And I definitely am glad that I accidentally just kind of like exited the road there and found it. So from there, I headed up north. I went through Nebraska City before I got there, I actually also stopped at Indian Head State Park, which is in Nebraska and is great for camping. There's some great nature trails there and well as, uh, as well as some great places to bike. So that's another great stop that you can add to your trip. Then I actually spent the night in Lincoln, Nebraska and just had a nice quiet evening there. There are good restaurants there if you are looking for you know, a place to stay traveling across the country where you're gonna have a little bit more for amenities and things like that. I definitely recommend Lincoln if you're traveling this route. Now, from there, I just headed west on Interstate 80 and you basically skirt the North Platte River for along this way and the Oregon Trail just kind of runs south basically of the freeway. So you're kind of following a lot of the Oregon Trail this whole way. So it came really like historically down here and this freeway was basically built over a lot of what was the old Oregon Trail. So when you get to Oglala, which is here on the map, you actually kind of head off the freeway and you head up here towards Scott Bluff National Monument. Along the way, you will pass by Chimney Rock, which was that big spire in the video. And as I said, one of the main kind of like prominent landmarks for people that were traveling, you know, out west because they obviously didn't have maps the way that we have them now, you know, everything was marked via the land. And the reason people were more successful on the Mormon Trail is actually because there were more landmarks north of the North Platte River. So people had an easier time kind of like finding the bluffs and finding different alcoves and different landmarks than they did following along the southern route, which was basically just the open plains of Nebraska. And there wasn't a lot to differentiate from the terrain. So a lot of the people on the southern route had that to deal with. And they also had obviously river fjording with really soft, muddy conditions. Also in this video, one of the things that I struggled with was the wind. It was extremely windy. 
on this entire kind of couple of days through Nebraska. And that's pretty typical for April and May. And it was pretty typical also for the travelers that were on the Oregon Trail at this time as well, because a lot of them accounted for that type of climate in their journals. So around here, you're going to find Chimney Rock. And then there are few scattered hotels in here, but not very many. And you're definitely gonna wanna wait until you get closer to Scotts Bluff National Monument if you're needing somewhere to stay in this area. So as you guys saw at Scotts Bluff National Monument, I did crash my drone. Now this drone doesn't have obstacle avoidance. So when I flew my drone, up to get a big picture of the monument I actually backed up too far and hit the other big um, monument that was on the other side so sadly did not uh, be was not able to retrieve that drone and it was a total loss so as you guys can see for Scotts Bluff the monument is here if you go when it's open there's actually a tunnel that goes through the mountain which is really cool so try to go to that before 4 p.m. As I said in the video, I actually missed this by about five minutes and was unable to drive through the tunnel, but luckily I'd already kind of hiked up and seen what was at the top of the monument. And this right here is Mitchell Pass. So, and as you guys can see on here, it says Old Oregon Trail. So you do follow along the Oregon Trail on this route. And basically my drone crashed into this Sentinel Rock. So <laughs> I'm laughing about it now just because Luckily, I was able to get all the footage and, you know, I would rather have my life than a drone. So things happen and camera equipment and stuff always breaks. So it's not a huge deal. So after I left Scotts Bluff, I actually continued west on the Oregon Trail and then headed actually over to, which I don't have on the map right here, but I actually headed over to Fort Laramie, which is in Wyoming, and that's where I spent the night. And I will say just a couple of things about, you know, this trip and what to expect. If you guys are wanting to follow this route, um, I will kind of put some of these points up on the description of this video so you guys can maybe map quest the same way or Google Maps, I should say. Um, but if you're like me and you're either vegetarian or uh, like to eat healthy, you are gonna have a hard time finding healthy options in a lot of this area um, and I found this kind of throughout the Midwest so I would definitely recommend going to the grocery store and packing stuff if you're road tripping uh, I think that's kind of what you should do anyways if you're road tripping uh, to save money and also kind of like you know reduce your waste and all that stuff so uh, definitely stop at the grocery stores and fill up on the things that you like to eat so that you're not stuck somewhere starving with not a lot of options because I definitely had a hard time finding um, healthy stuff to eat along this way and then you know once you pass Fort Laramie in Wyoming you're gonna get into Colorado or Western Wyoming there's gonna be a lot more options uh, for you as well but I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know this is a little bit of a different format but I felt like because I kind of had to end the video abruptly with the loss of my drone and that kind of just frazzled the rest of my day that I wanted to do a little bit of a follow up, answer you know some questions about where I actually went and talk to you guys about some of the other places that I got to see on the route, which are really cool. So definitely check out the National Wildlife Refuge if you're going through this area and I will put that in the description as well. And if you guys are just checking out this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button too and give this video a thumbs up. I will see you guys soon on another adventure. I'm actually here in Mexico City right now, so I should be having some new videos coming out from this area of the world soon too. But have a great day. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.